Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's tutorial we're going to go over the custom jump option that is available in Pixel Game Maker. This is also known in mainstream game dev as variable jump height. And what this option offers is for the player to dictate how high they jump. For instance, if the player was just to tap the jump button, they could have a short jump. Where if they were to hold the button, there would be a window of time that they could jump higher and higher and higher until it reaches its peak ultimately, or they let go of the button. So they can have a variable jump height. And we have seen this displayed really well in some of the contest games that have come out, particularly in Mortimer Dark. They did a really good job using the custom jump with their characters. We also see this jumping in most platformer games, at least modern platformer games. And Pixel Game Maker has made it really easy to set up. So with that, let's get started. All right, so I'm here in the Objects tab where I have selected my controllable player object, which comes with this pre-made template of walk and jump. If you're wondering how to get this template, you can get it automatically by adding an object. You can select the animation, and then you can click Object Controlled by Input Device. And when you hit OK, you'll get this template. I'm going to delete this since I already have one, and go back to it and we'll have the jump. Now I have it to where, or default comes to where when you press A, you'll jump. And you perform a jump by selecting this option over here. Now right underneath it is the enable custom jump. And really what the custom means is the variable jump height. Now when you click it initially, if you're to play test this, and we started to jump around, and if I tap A, nothing happens. If I hold A, nothing happens. It all looks the same. So there are some more settings that we have to set up in order to account for variable jump height or custom jump. And it's a little confusing because it's called custom jump out here in the runtime actions. But in the moving and jumping tab, when you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's actually under this adjusted jump parameters. So when you enable custom jump, you have to adjust these parameters and vice versa. If you adjust these parameters, but don't enable custom jump, nothing will happen. So the first option here, we need to set the control key for the input. So what are you using to jump? And by default, I said on the template, it uses A. So I'm going to select A. Now the next option, set wait time for input. Now, what this option is letting you do is be able to set the amount of time that inputs will still be recognized. For instance, with a 0.3, and now that we have the input selected, we can play test. And if I just was to tap A, you'll see that I jump about the normal height that I was before. But if I hold A, I now jump a lot higher because I have a window of time that will increase the jump as I'm holding the input. And we can see as we decrease this value, let's say that we go to a lower value of 0.1. And if I was to jump, you'll see that I jump about the same. If I hold A, I barely jump a little higher, but it is higher. And then we can also see the reverse. If we were to add, say, 0.8, and we click play test, you'll see that, again, I can tap it, jump that same height, and then I can also hold it, and you'll see that I'm in the air, or at that top portion of the screen, for quite some time. So it's registering the jump input for that amount of time. Now, as soon as you let go, it's over. There's no more um, pressing it again to, to keep jumping. Now, I'm going to set this to 0.3 again. And play test to just show you the issue currently. And that is that if I press A or just tap it, you'll still see that I'm jumping rather far. And with variable height, you don't want this to be your minimum and then this to be your maximum. You want it more where this is going to be your minimum and, and like this would be your maximum, something like that. So we do have to adjust some things because you will notice that once you do click custom jump that your gravity and your initial jump speed values will be different in how they affect the player. So while tweaking the custom jump, one thing that I've found useful 
is to set the initial jump speed to the gravity effect and start from there as your base because I found that having them closer in number is going to give you a more accurate custom jump or variable jump. And if we were to play test, we'll see that now when I tap A, I get a small jump. And if I hold A, I get a little higher jump. Now, one thing as well, you might not like how floaty that jump is. So then we can start adjusting from here. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the input wait time from 0.3 to 0.2, and we'll see how that affects it. By decreasing the weight input time, we should now have less of a floaty look as the player is jumping, which is the case. But I want it to be able to jump to that block. So how do I adjust the height without making it floaty? And for that, you would just have to play with these numbers and get the effect that you're wanting. So for instance, you could increase the gravity to 5 and you could increase the initial jump to say 4.5. And by increasing the gravity effect, it means that everything is gonna happen less floaty. And by increasing the jump initial speed, you're going to be increasing the max height that you can achieve. So if we were to click play test and start to jump now, you'll see that we still retain a very low jump. Matter of fact, oh, it looks like you can still jump on one block yep and then if we hold a we jump pretty high and it looks really smooth and I can jump up to that layer or that uh, top tile so you'll have to play with these settings again you can use extremes you could put gravity up to 10 you could put gravity down to 1 see how all of that stuff goes so you'll have to find the perfect setting for your custom jump by adjusting these three settings and one thing I will mention is that these numbers, 4.5 and 5, they work great on this project, and this project is using a 24 by 24 tile size. So one thing that I have found is that the larger tile size you go, the larger the numbers need to be right here. For instance, if you were to go to a 48 by 48 project, you could double these numbers and you would probably be getting the same effect that I am in a 24 by 24 tile set. And if by chance you were using a smaller tile set, say a, well, let's go half of 24. So if you were using a 12 by 12 tile set, you could half these numbers and you would be getting the same jump effect. So if mid project, you decide to double your tile size, real quick math is you could just double these numbers and it would come out to about the same. So that's it for this custom jump video. I hope it helped you out. I personally feel that this is a very important thing to implement into your games. It gives the player a little freedom when it comes to movement. And anytime you're giving the player freedom, it's usually a good thing. So with that said, if you have any cool ways that you've used this video, please comment below. And I will see you at the next video.